So you're taking the AP statistics test. You get all the way through the multiple choice and you do have a little bit of time to take a nap. And then you power through the five free response questions, feeling great, feeling ready, feeling a little bit tired. And then you turn the page for number six and it says suggested time, 25 minutes. I know, I know, it's really important that you don't panic right now. Number six on the free response is the investigative task. And it does take a little bit more time than the others, but I promise you it's not that bad. And as long as you saved yourself more than a few minutes, you're gonna be okay. Now, the investigative task is supposed to be something new that you've never done before. And I know that legitimately sounds insane to say that there's gonna be something that you've never seen before on the AP exam. It's not really like something you've never seen before. It's more like they're gonna ask you to do things you learned in the class in a new way. Because if you think about it, like the first five questions of the AP stats exam, we know what they're gonna be. I know that number three or four or five or whatever is gonna be a confidence interval or a significance test. I know that there's gonna be a question asking me to like describe a histogram. I can do that, I've been doing that since September. Come on, give me a real question. But with number six, there's no like set way of answering the question. So it can be a little intimidating. It's also a little intimidating because it's usually like many, many parts. Sometimes the parts have parts. So they'll give you a suggested amount of time. Hopefully you're able to practice enough beforehand that you know if that is like too much or too little for you, but you should budget a little extra time um, compared to the one through five. So we're gonna look at two um, previous exams in this video. We're gonna look at 2022 and then 2021. Um, really the only way to get ready for number six is to look at a lot of old exams. So head to the College Board website, look at some old exams, um, just so you're familiar with it. Okay, let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so 2022. A1. Complete the following table by recording the relative frequencies of successful and unsuccessful treatments at each clinic. Okay, relative frequencies. So it's like of the whoever. Is it of unsuccessful treatments who was at A and B or is it of A who was unsuccessful and successful? Let's see what part two is asking us. Based on the relative frequency table in part A1, which clinic is more successful? Okay, so this sounds like we're doing of clinic A and of clinic B. Okay, so of clinic A, there's 139 patients there. 51 were unsuccessful um, in their allergy treatment, so 51 out of 139. Similar over here for clinic B. Um, I should change those into percents probably. Okay, so it looks like clinic A is more successful. They have a higher percentage of successful treatments. Okay, B, based on the design of the study, would a statistically significant result allow the researchers to conclude that receiving treatments at the clinic you selected in part A2 causes a higher, per ooh, causes a higher percentage of successful treatments than at the other clinic? Okay, so after you read one of the parts of a question six, maybe just think like, when did we talk about cause okay they're talking about like the design of the study this is reminding me of scope of inference way back when we said you can only conclude cause and effect if you've randomly assigned people to groups remember you can only make conclusions about the population if you randomly select and you can only make cause and effect um, conclusions if you randomly assign so let's go back up and just double check did we randomly assign Random samples of patient records. That doesn't sound like people were assigned to a clinic. No, we cannot conclude that the clinic causes the treatments to be successful or not because people were not randomly assigned to the two different clinics. They you know, got to choose which clinic they went to. Oh, wow, okay. Um, go ahead and pause so you can read this. Okay, so now instead of just looking at the clinics and success, we've added in a third variable, which is the severity of the allergy. For, uh, for each clinic, which allergy severity is treated more successfully? Okay, so for clinic A, mild, it's 78 out of 104 and 10 out of 35. Okay, so for mild, 75% were successful and for severe, only 29% were successful. Okay, and then for Clinic B, 92% of the mild cases were successful, 43% of the severe cases 
were successful. Guys, the number of typos I've made in this video, my god. <laughs> okay, for each clinic, which allergy severity is more likely to be treated? Okay, so now we're kind of looking the other direction. So for clinic A, mild is 104 out of 139. And for clinic B, mild is 12 out of 68. <sighs> Should I just start over? Okay, I know this is messy. I'm sorry. I literally almost stopped recording this because I'm so annoyed at how messy it looks, but I'm, <sighs> I'm going to keep going. <laughs> okay, so for clinic A, 75% of them are mild cases and 25% are severe. Clinic B, the reverse is happening. Only 18% are mild, 82% are severe. Okay, part D, using your answers from part C, give a reasonable explanation of why the more successful clinic identified in part A2 is the same as or different from the physician's conclusion that clinic B is more successful. So A2, who did we say in A2? Oh, we said clinic A was better. Clinic A had the higher success rate. So we concluded that A was better. The physician looked at these tables and said clinic B was better. So it's different. Give a reasonable explanation of why the more successful clinic different than the physician's conclusion about the more successful clinic. Okay, so how come we said A was better? Okay, so the question is, why did A seem better? When you broke it down by type of allergy, B was better, but it seemed like A was better at the beginning. So I know it's going to involve one of the previous parts. So part C, they didn't just have us do that, like, for fun. So we're probably going to need that in part D. Part C showed us that mild allergies are more likely to be successful. And the second part of C showed us that A is more likely to see mild allergy patients. Okay, 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 okay. So clinic A has a higher percentage of the easier patients to cure. I, I'm, I love statistics. <laughs> okay, so when you break it down, you can see that clinic A is receiving more of the patients who have mild symptoms. And we can also see that mild symptoms are much more likely to be successful um, in their treatments. So basically clinic A is getting the easier patients to treat and clinic B is getting the severe cases harder to treat. We did it. We've been recording so long, is the lighting bad now? Was the lighting even good to start with? That's, that's the real question. <laughs> okay, well that was a trip and a half. Let's go to 2021. <laughs> Part A, compare the distribution of average attendance between the Um, it's been a week. My camera. It's just, it's wrong. Is the light flashing? Okay, for real, it's cursed. Why is the light flashing? Oh my god, what is wrong with you? You were fully charged. I think it really is cursed. What 